Where to go? Who can know? We must wait and see. God says there will be a sun. Ha ha, laugh with me. UMC of Pastor Ed Salmons. The amazing relationships that we develop with each other. The basis of our beliefs. This church has been our family home. They welcomed me like a family member and it really became my family here. So the friendliness of the people, the fact that most of our friends are in this church. I would have to say our very best friends are basically people from this church. The people that are here. I think the fellowship, I think the spirituality. As you have just heard from our church members, the United Methodist Church of Westport and Weston is home to a welcoming, friendly, and devoted community. This community has grown throughout the years, but has maintained these same values in arriving at the point where we are today, 40 years after we had our first service in our current church building. distinguishing highlights. I would say one of our church is a church that certainly serves in the community. One of course is the, the foundation of, of the people that are in it. Things that I like about United Methodist Church of Westport and Weston, the people are so open and loving and kind and just accepting of, of anyone that walks through the door. What I say to everybody who asks about this church is that it's a gentle community. Everybody's always smiling and they, it just makes you feel better all the time. And after a couple of weeks, we become part of the congregation. Really, that's one of the best parts of the church. And the second part we like most is the children. On Memorial Day, we wear our yellow t-shirts and go on the float. sitting there uh, visiting on one of the first Sunday that we were there and the choir came in and, and stood at the back of the pews and uh, when the first hymn was sung this music just rolled out of that uh, group and we said boy this is the one. <laughs> One of my favorite things about UMC is the involvement of youth in many of the church activities. Everyone cares about every other person. Recently, we had 13 women between the ages of 18 to 60 do their first liturgical dance. They were so excited. I think things like with the dance, it's been really great because it's helping you know, introduce the idea of being a spiritual person in a physical body. I'm also really excited about the dance program. We have had a wonderful time. We have a great sisterhood and just a huge bond that um, cannot be broken anywhere. The welcomingness of the church, the fact that it's filled with people who are warm and caring and dedicated. And I also think, of course, first of all, well, of the, of the faith, faith centered issues in this church. We are a very loving community. Our Methodist church has always been known as the friendliest church in town. I go every Sunday, I get up earlier just to go to this church and it means a lot to me. It's really the best start 
for me in the Sunday and just belongs to my life now. And this church is such a big part of my life by getting involved in all those activities in church. And I enjoy all those diverse people here and all those different activities. And what I like about the people is they are so open and so warm. I think when you work on something and build it, you don't leave it. That is what we like about UMC. Our earlier congregation formed from the merging of two churches, the Saugatuck and Westport Methodist Episcopal churches. Then, in 1946, they merged to form the Community Methodist Church. In 1955, the church and parsonage were sold and we relocated to the corner of Church and Myrtle Streets into the building we now recognize as the Seabury Center of the Christ and Holy Trinity Church. However, as the congregation grew to over 100 members, we wanted a larger building with complete facilities for worship, fellowship, and religious education. So, on February 26, 1964, the idea of purchasing land for the construction of a new church was proposed to and later approved by the quarterly conference. In April of that same year, the fundraising drives began. We knew we could make our vision possible. The total church budget was going to be in the order of $17,000. And I just, I told Dave McCrack, I said, we'll never make that. <laughs> and he said, well, have faith. <laughs> And the fact is, we did. It seemed that uh, really to build a church at that time, something had to happen. And our congregation just outgrew the old church. Uh, it was a very strange time and a very lucky time for us because um, it took a lot of dedication and an awful lot of people put a lot of, of effort and sacrifice into pledging for, for the new church. We were not on the building committee, thank goodness, but the people that were just worked so hard for so long we were still a fairly small town, and the Westport Bank and Trust backed us. But in order to do that, members of the congregation had to put their houses up. So about 35 families actually put their houses up. They were guaranteeing the mortgage on the church. Uh, most all of my family <laughs> had their mortgages Including in that us. one. <laughs> Harry was working two jobs. I was, had three little ones. So I delivered newspapers for three years. The day that we were supposed to be the first day in our church, yeah. Yeah. that was very interesting. We had a, a rainy day, and of course the driveways weren't in yet, so there was mud. So you couldn't get there, and uh, the minister, we called up. Minister Arnold Miller called me uh, that morning and uh, said, Harry, I don't know what we're going to do. He said, I can just about got my car into the property, and we're supposed to have everybody come in today. So uh, he said, it is just solid mud. So I said, well, hold on for a few minutes. And when we opened up, it was raining, and Harry Audley was the one that got the school buses. There was a field that was there to see if we could use the field for parking. So uh, we were working with hip boots on, and the, the field parking cars, and the bus would come up to the first uh, sidewalk, which was in, and unload the people to come in. Uh, it was kind of a, a change of uh, what was going on. After that, it dried up a little bit, and so we were able to get some uh, crushed stone in the driveways and were able to get into the building. Mm -hmm. You can call them miracles or not. Much was sacrificed by our devoted congregation. And finally, on June 26, 1966, we celebrated the groundbreaking here on Rabbit Hill. Almost one year later, on June 25th, 1967, we held a cornerstone laying ceremony. Each person took a stone from around the property and put it along the church's foundation. This symbolized each person's involvement and faith commitment in building the new church. The architect, Harold E. Wagner of Philadelphia, had a vision for what our church would become. Many aspects of the church symbolize aspects of our church community and our beliefs.